Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. here. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to talk about no place. So a fancy title just to talk about how to build Android apps without the play services provided by Google. Um, so uh, my name is Julien Salvi. I'm an Android engineer at Innovator, a French startup in Paris. I've been building Android apps since Froyo, so it's now almost 10 years from now. And I'm part of the Paris Android user group. I often listen to punk music and drinking a lot of APS beer. And you can find me on Twitter at Julian Savi. So uh, today I'm going to show you how you can end up into developing some Android apps without the Play services at first. And then I'll show you an overview of the tools you can use uh, with or without the Play services. Uh, so it will be the alternative tools uh, you can use for uh, alternative at the uh, alternative at uh, Firebase, uh, the push notification, or Google Maps. And then I'll show you uh, a nice code sample on how to uh, display uh, a web view without using the, the internal web view of the Android system and uh, display a map uh, with some markers and uh, some uh, polylines uh, without using Google Maps. And so first, how you can end up developing applications without the Play services. So there's many way uh, you can build with these apps. So uh, first, because you wanna target a, la a large set of devices. So for example, you want to target the new uh, Huawei devices that does not support the Play services anymore, uh, or your company wants to build an application for a company. Um, the company provides uh, the device, and the device does not have the Play services installed in, in the system. So with that, uh, you have to choose some tools and some library that do doesn't uh, require the Play services. Or uh, just on the uh, uh, like a side project, you want to try something new and do not depend on the or Google tooling, and you want to test something open source or just have fun with the, with the new library you want to test. So let's see how we can uh, we can do it and we can achieve building our applications with the Play services. So uh, let's see like a uh, simple use case. So uh, this is Appy. Appy is a Appy developer. Uh, is using good practices, good practices, building apps with Kotlin, always testing and doing some nice animation uh, when building a new apps or maintaining his current applications. And uh, now Appy has to build a new application. So uh, it's basically uh, a new application using a map, uh, showing some fancy feature, uh, doing some stuff. Uh, it also have to implement some push notification. So at first, you think about Firebase messaging for uh, displaying nice push notification uh, for uh, its users. And it's also thing for Google. Doing amazing stuff with uh, with them, um, doing its feature. And also, he thinks, yeah, I must provide the application to the user. So as usual, I go for the Play Store, and my application will be available for everyone. So everything's looking good for now. But after a while, uh, he got some crashes, maybe a lot of crashes sometimes. Uh, you see these two crashes. So the Play Services repairable location and the Google Play Services not available location. So uh, these two exceptions happen uh, when the Play Services are not installed or uh, the um, 
version is too far from the new west or uh or for example if uh, there is like uh, uh, yes a deprecated version of the uh, google play services and so that's something wrong this is a lot of crashes and it's not very happy anymore so happy long that the application have been deployed outside the play store that's something that can happen for example uh Pushing the APK can be duplicated and pushed to APK Mirror or another uh, alternat alternative store. And uh, a lot of devices like the Huawei One, or uh, if you have a custom Android uh, RAM, or you just de de install the uh, Play services uh, on your phone, uh, the application will crash or a lot of except except uh, a lot of exception will be raised so uh sometimes it's just because of the user or uh for example here uh, we can assume that the application was also distributed for like a company that owns a device that does not have the play services installed on the on the os mm -hmm. So, uh, but no worries, we can all be happy to, to build this application without crashes and uh, with a lot of support for the user that does not have the play services on their device. So uh, let's see uh, which tool we can, uh, we, can pro we can use for building the, uh, uh, the application. So uh, let's see some alternative tools. So uh, I'll show you a bunch of, uh, of tools uh, that can be used uh, for replacing, for example, Google Maps, Firebase, uh, some alternative to uh, deploy your, your application for, for example, if you don't want to go for the Play Store. And it's not very tight to the uh, uh, to the Play services, but uh, I'd show you how you can uh, have an alternative uh, library for displaying web views, um, like building your own web browser, own web browser, or uh, just displaying some web content in your application. Uh, so, in creation first is there always an alternative to uh, to a tools from Google? Uh, short answer: No. Uh, for example, if you want uh, an alternative tool for, for example, from Google Cast, which is very proprietary for Google, uh, it's very, very difficult and it's not very reliable to, to use some alternative tools there. Uh, so uh, your device will have to, to get the, the Play services installed. Uh, in, for the Firebase libraries, Google uh, is building a lot of tools with Firebase. And now more and more libraries uh, does not require the Play services. And that's, that's a nice stuff for deploying to a lot of devices. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, so Firestore, Storage, Crashlytics, uh, in-app messaging, or database and config does not require the Play services. So you can use it uh everywhere uh we you don't need to worry about the the support of the play services but uh the machine learning libraries uh the old old uh, process or the the push messaging the fcm library um are still using the play services to to work to work well so uh, uh there is a still a lot of work to do but uh, a lot of now a lot of firebase libraries uh, are being detached from the play services so now let's see uh, how we can send push notifications without using the the fcm so uh, sending push notification, you usually uh, go for the uh, GCM or the FCM library. Uh, so uh, uh, implementing the uh, the FCM library in your application, 
which is data to the play services for receiving your, your messaging uh, the server of push uh, on the on the device but there are some alternative way to send messaging to your phone uh, let's see for example uh, I took three uh, three simple here uh, pushy which is a uh, a nice alternative tools very similar to the uh, the FCM uh, open push which is uh, an, uh, an open source tooling for sending me uh, push messages and RabbitMQ that's uh, that's a tool we use in our application here in my current company for uh, sending messaging uh, to our application so uh pushy pushy you know, is a uh, reliable push notifications delivery service uh it's nice because it's cross-platform so you can uh, implement it on the your backend and uh, then use the sdk for android ios or you i don't know xamarin flutter or something uh, so uh, you will have your push notification for all all these platforms uh at first it's a free plan so you can test it on your side and see uh if it's suitable for your use cases and for your market and then you'll go uh, for the premium uh premium stuff so it's a paid plan uh at the end uh, the implementation here is very very similar to to the gcm uh, xcm so uh, you need to register uh send a token to your backend uh, send a token to the the pushy pushy server and then uh, you have to process the the message uh, sent by the uh the server and the protocol here is based on the uh, mqtt so it's a message queue uh, protocol so uh, I'll show you a, a bit of uh, MQTT here, just for the knowledge. So uh, MQTT is a message broker. So the server send, for example, uh, you can say you want to send an order for for a restaurant. So the client uh, has made the order online, and so the uh, the, the order will be uh, pushed to uh, to the MQTT broker, and then uh, on the device part, uh, we will subscribe to or to a, to a channel to a subscriber, and listen uh, a new message that's in uh, maybe a queue or something like that. So every time a new order will be added to the queue. Uh, the subscriber, uh, the the subscriber will be aware that a new message, so a new order is in the pipe, and then so uh, it will be sent to the uh, to the devices. So MQTT is a extremely extremely uh, lightweight and battery friendly message protocol, and so it does not like use a lot of uh, battery so and a lot of bandwidth so it's a pretty good tool for sending a lot of messages to to your devices so as i said it's very similar to the fcm and, uh, and the gcm uh, push notification library uh, you have to register uh, your uh, your token and register to pushy and then if your token is already there just uh, listen the new message uh, that may come to to your device. Uh, so you know, just need to register. It's a very simple, just a register method. Then you, know, you can save your token locally, or and even send it to your own backend to to send your own push and your own messaging, your custom messages. And then on your uh, on your application, you have to. Uh, implement the uh, broadcast receiver uh, broadcast for receiving messages and you will uh, you'll do uh, some some stuff with the messages uh, whatever you want to displaying a notification going to a new screen or uh, displaying a custom view whatever you want uh, 
Uh, all right, now we can go. We can go into Open Push. Open Push is the it's an open source and free alternative to the the GCM. So it's very decentralized and self-hosted. Uh, so uh, the user is in is in control, and it doesn't require any developer key. So it's totally free, and you can use it at whenever you want and uh, it's maybe a, a little bit more complicated than the, than the HC, uh, FCM because uh, you need to produce a lot of code on the backend side and on the client side so on your devices um, it's still in uh, in development so uh, there is a lot of uh, development right now uh, I didn't test it yet but it's, it's, it's promising uh, because it's totally free and open source, but uh, you might need a lot of maintenance for, for this part. So, yeah, as I said, there is a lot of development there. Uh, so yeah, you'll need to, uh, to dig a lot on the uh, push server. So building your own server with the with the uh, and implement also a push client so on the on the device uh that's a lot of uh, a lot of work here but uh it's it's an alternative maybe not for like mass market or something like that but if you want to test a new thing or have, a, have time to to implement some uh, open source notification uh go for it and if you want to go into very very detail uh, on open push, uh, there was a very nice presentation uh, at the beginning of this year, I think, uh, by Marcus Hoffman, which was uh, which is a, a maintainer for uh, the F Trade uh, store and the and open push. So the linking the, the link here uh, will you'll have uh, access to the the talk itself and the and the slides. So if you know if you want to know into very detail uh, what what Open Push here is, uh, you can look look at this link. So uh, here I'm at Korean Pump Company. We are using RabbitMQ for Android. It's, it's mostly used uh, for uh, for backend stuff. Uh, RabbitMQ is most known for developing you know, message broker, but on the backend side. But here we are using uh, RabbitMQ on the backend side and on the uh, client side, so on uh, on our Android devices. So it's a message broker like the MQTT. But it's originally based on the uh, IMQP protocol, which is the Advanced Message Queue protocol. But you can also use, uh, they have also the support of the uh, ASTMP uh, protocol or the MQTT uh, protocol. So the uh, ST STMP protocol, the streaming text orienting messaging protocol, and uh, the MQTT is just uh, I present you just before. Uh, so, with with RabbitMQ, you can receive and send messages. This is very nice, even especially if you have a lot of messages to send and receive. For our use case, we are using this for uh, sending a lot of data about our order, um, about the uh, yeah. About but the order and the uh, the catalog we are using for uh, ordering uh, some food at uh, at the restaurants. And also, it might be a good solution if your application is always uh, on, like uh, you have a kiosk application. Uh, so the queue will be always up, and it's a uh, pretty pretty nice thing. Yeah. So what's under under the hood? Um, so yeah, you have your uh, RabbitMQ implementation. So on the server side and on the client side, and uh, uh, you have uh, several queues on the uh, RabbitMQ side. Uh, so you can publish, uh, publish and subscribe to a queue. Uh, 
So it will be like some exchanger uh, here. So you can uh, send messages, receive messages. Uh, it's it's like an open connection uh, here. So it's it's quite nice. So a uh, bit of code here. So how to implement the uh, RabbitMQ uh, library on on, the, on Android. So uh, let's see how we can publish messages. So uh, we have our queue here, and just here, just need to add like a new message to the queue, and then uh, the uh, the message will be added to the queue. Uh, so we can now open our new connection uh, for talking to the RabbitMQ uh, on the server side. So. For example, here you can set your username, password, uh, your virtual host, uh, the port you want to listen, um, if you want to automatically recover the connection if uh, if there is an issue. Then for publishing messages, uh, so you open a new connection uh, here, uh, you create a new channel. Uh, the channel will be there for uh, sending, sending the messages. So we adding the new, uh, for example, here. Uh, let's assume we add a new comment, uh, a new comment uh, on the on the order, and so we adding the uh, the the new message to to the queue. And while the queue is not empty, uh, so we extract the messaging. Here we put the exchanger. So the exchanger is uh, it's like a router for for the messages. And the routing key is uh, very the the identifiant uh, the ID of your of your route. So you know, we'll post uh, through the exchanger and on the the routing uh, the the comment v1 uh, um, exchanger. And then through the channel, uh, we just. Uh, publish our messaging with the with the exchanger, the routing key. Maybe you can add some uh, some header. It's possible here, and then uh, wait for the the confirmation that the message has been received by the backend. Uh, if it's not uh, received, you know, we can just add it again to the queue and like uh, add a loop like this. If uh, if it's wrong after maybe uh, three, four time trial, so we can do nothing. It's an error handling. You can do it uh, uh, depending on your use case. And then now we saw how to push uh, messages uh, to a queue, and now let's see how we can consume messages. So here is basic uh, things of uh, how we can join like receive push notification so is here we can receive uh, messages uh, from a queue so here we are uh, we have our channel we have, have uh, from the channel we connect to the queue to the queue with the exchanger as i uh, said before and we want for example here uh, for the the chat key for receiving uh, messages from the chat for example and then uh, we just need to uh, listen the queue uh, and then end all the, the messages uh, and all the data. For example, if you receive a JSON or uh, a straight string from uh, from the messages, uh, depend depend on of, on what you want to send. And yeah, that's pretty much it for for the notification part. So uh, now I'm going to focus on how you can add some uh, very uh, nice map alternative to Google Maps. So first, I want to introduce you the uh, OpenStreetMap SDK. So it's a free and open source map for uh, the collaborative project. So you can be involved in the community and send pull requests, um, be part of the, of the, of the team and uh, build new feature for, for the OpenStreetMap SDK. 
And it provides many features uh, such as uh, your, your map, like the Google Map uh, application. Uh, you have the geocoding address or the, the routing. So if you want to display uh, a route between two points. And it's used by uh, know, Facebook, Uber, uh, Foursquare, Microsoft. So it's used by a uh, big company. And so it's a very trusty, uh, trusty uh, SDK. Uh, yeah, it's very reliable. Even if it's open source, it's very maintained. The community, the community is very active, and all the source, especially for the uh, implementation for Android. So it's on GitHub, and so yeah, you can send issues. Uh, it's very, very, very reactive. One uh, on the drawback, uh, the loading might be very slow. Uh, so it's not as smooth as, smooth at, as uh, the Google Map SDK because uh, you need to uh, download all the tiles. It's not uh, backed by uh, the Google Map application. Uh, so that's why it's um, not so smooth as Google Map. And also a big drawback, it will add a lot a huge dependency uh, inside your application. So be sure to... Uh, split uh, and use program and optimize your code, uh, split by ABI, because uh, it will add a lot of, uh, lot of code uh, inside your application. Uh, but it's very simple to, to use it and add some uh, very basic stuff you, you, you can use uh, with Google Map. So uh, just need to set the map view uh, as a, uh, a classic and right view. Um, then it's very simple to, for example, put uh, uh, use a type of uh, tile here. Use a uh, map uh, You can add some zoom zoom controller uh, like like Google Map or uh, set, for example, a geo point at the center. Uh, in your in your application, so uh, I'll be back later with uh, with uh, OpenStreetMap uh, when I'll show you the the small uh, the small sample app. And there is also uh, another nice alternative to uh, to Google Map. Uh, uh, this is Ear Map. So uh, now it's very very reliable and very nice. Uh, the alternative is very very similar to Google Map. And there are a lot of features, uh, so you can do a lot of things with uh, with the ear, uh, such as uh, navigations. You can have free buildings. You can have also um, detail about um, your navigation if you're using a bike. Uh, if uh, you're using the motorway, you can have the, the toll prices. Uh, it depends on the. Uh, of the plan you're using, there's some free and paid plans. So uh, the the premium plan, you'll have access to all the features, and it's uh, it's a lot of feature, and it's very interesting if you app is very focused on building uh, an application uh, using the map. So it's very very similar to to Google Map, and um, so there is an also a very nice documentation. Uh, and very nice samples. Uh, the samples are available on GitHub. And so uh, thanks with that, the migration can be very smooth if you want to move from Google Map uh, to the ear map. But again, uh, it will add uh, a big dependency in your application. So be aware of, of that. Yeah, so as I said, the transition uh, from Google Map to Air Map can be very, uh, very easy. So just need to provide the, the map view and then do your stuff uh, here. Like for example, you can add a marker, uh, you can uh, draw a route between two points uh, or add something very fancy to, uh, to your map application. So now uh, let's see how we can distribute our application outside the Play Store. So f there's many, many stores uh, available, available on the internet. So uh, just focus on two stores. Um, one is 
uh, have to read because uh, it's open source, uh, it's free. So if you are building an application which is free and open source, you can definitely go for this uh, uh, for this store. Uh, they accept only open source and free applications. So uh, you can find some very nice uh, nice stuff here, uh, especially if you are in the open source world. Uh, so it's community maintained. Uh, it's there for uh, ten years. Uh, so uh, go for it. And on the other side, uh, if you want to distribute your application outside the Play Store, uh, no, if your application is not open source, you can go for APK Mirror. Uh, so you can find all the application. Almost all the application uh, available of, uh, on the uh, on the Play Store, but uh, there is also uh, some other application that has been maybe banned or uh, not accepted by by the Play Store. You can find them here. Or if you are better uh, use case here uh, in, my com in my company. So we are using a mobile device management, uh, a MDM, because uh, we are not uh, deploying the application uh, on the mass market. So we have a fleet of devices. Uh, we want to have the control of uh, where our application is deployed. So uh, at first, we were using uh, the App Center uh, MDM is uh, built by Microsoft. Uh, so there is a lot of existing solution in the market uh, for deploying uh, this kind of application when you want to target uh, a fleet of devices that you know, because uh, it's mostly used for like yeah enterprise ap application or for business to business application. So. Um, that's a good solution. Is is it's for this case? Uh, um, as we grow, uh, App Center started like to be quite a pain for us. So we decided to build our own uh, mobile device management. Uh, let's see a glimpse of, of um, how we we did it and uh, um, how the conception uh, were made. But first, uh, as I said, there is uh, two choices. You know, when you want to choose uh, a store, like the f APK Mirror, or an NDM. So if you want to target mass, um, mass market and want something similar at the Play Store, go for f or APK Mirror. But if you target enterprise application, or a B2B application, uh, and you have the control of your fleet, uh, go for the MDM. And for the conception here, so uh, we have a new version. So we implement it. It can be a SDK inside your application or uh, a new application like a kind of a store. So. Uh, we ask uh, maybe if with a with a work manager uh, if a new version is available maybe every two 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 hours or something like that as well. Um, if the new if a new version is available, uh, then the SDK will ping the web service. We build our web service you know, using Ketor uh, and Postgre, and using the storage with um, Amazon S3. Uh, then. The, the web service will be uh, will send a link uh, to the devices, uh, and then you can download and install the new the new APK of your application. And I want to share a nice code snippet for uh, installing a new APK uh, on your devices. So uh, here you have your package installer. Uh, so it's available since uh, Android Lollipop. Um, that's a way to uh, install updates of your application. So uh, you'll need to then uh, register a broadcast in order to handle uh, success or failure of your uh, update. 
and do not uh, forget to add uh, this permission here, especially for uh, Android 11. Uh, and you need also to provide a, a file provider for uh, installing your uh, your new APK. And for the web view, uh, I really like uh, using the, the Gecko view as developed and maintained by Firefox. Uh, it's very suitable for displaying web content uh, in your application or uh, if you want to build your own web border. Uh, it's a standalone library, so again, uh, it's very huge. So uh, be aware that you will add a lot of codes and a lot of dependencies inside your application. Uh, so uh, think about the ABI split, uh, program all the things. And it's uh, it's a very good and maintained application. So uh, they are very reactive and they provide a lot of updates uh, on the of uh, on the uh, on the library. And it's very simple. Just uh, need to set a Gecko session here, uh, inject the Gecko session in your Gecko view, and then you can load your your URL. Um, you'll be as uh, as a web view inside your application. So now uh, let's see some uh, nice code sample here. Uh, so just uh, display a map here. Uh, so uh, here is Android Studio. So for example, here we have our map. So I'm using view binding here. So we have our uh, map view here, just added as a view inside uh, inside your frame layout, for example. Uh, then uh, set the tile style to one. Uh, here, just add some uh, visibility tools. Uh, and then I just add a marker um, uh, in Johannesburg, and then draw a line between uh, Paris and Johannesburg. So how does it look like uh, on a real device? Uh, so first, uh, yeah, uh, first you, you can see the Gecko view. Uh, on the screen, so here is the, the website of the uh, Death Fest South Africa. So it's it's very it's uh, it's very fast. It's very nice. So it's very good alternative for uh, using uh, of if you want an alternative for uh, the the web views and for the uh, OpenStreetMap. Here, so I added a small marker here, so I can zoom in, uh, zoom in here to Johannesburg, and I just added uh, um, a small marker here saying Death Fest South Africa, and then uh, I can zoom back uh, and see uh, all Africa, and then see the line between. Here we I am in Paris and Johannesburg. And I can center here, here in Paris where, where I live. So uh, it's very similar to uh, to Google Map. There is not uh, all the feature, but uh, if you want a, a little side project or uh, just uh, a few work on the on the map things, uh, it's a pretty good alternative here. So uh, that's it for the demo. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And I hope you enjoy my talk and learn, learn new things about building application without the play services. Um, uh, thank you again. Thank you very much. Um,